Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we're gonna continue this deep dive into um, Da Vinci brand uh, sepia. This is a mixture of the carbon black and the uh, PBR7, which is, I think, um, umber. I have an eight by 10 sheet of the Stonehenge Legion. This is the 90 pound paper and it is the craft color. Uh, I pre-wet it with water so you could kind of see some of the reflections there. Um, I'll probably adjust the lighting as we go throughout. And I'm gonna create a fast and loose tonalist scene in the style of the modern ton tonalists, uh, Stuart Davies, Dennis Sheehan, and others. Now, this paper I think is exactly eight by 10 and I have a board that's exactly eight by 10 so it's connected to that right on the very edge of it okay so let's see I'm getting a light shadow there we go I've been adjusting things lately start putting in a sky now with these you're welcome to follow along and um, you're always welcome to sign your own name and you always have my express permission to sell anything you do when you follow along. I want you guys to have fun and be successful and have money for art supplies. And if you like this, please consider uh, liking and subscribing and I have the Patreon down below. And thank you to everybody that does support this channel. Um, it helps me run these different experiments. Kind of just throwing the pigment on there and seeing how I want it to um, take place, what type of image I want to happen. Right now it's a whole lot of nothing. I can probably use the paper towel to pull back. I'm wondering if, um, if I should use the craft paper. I was thinking about taking the white gouache and putting in a, you know, sky highlight with it. But it may be worth just using that craft color as the lightest value. And I would keep this ultra moody and very easy in that sense. Let's see. I might get very Stuart Davies esque with a uh, wide landscape. Let's see. One thing that um, I'm watching out for is that the, the black pigment, for me, it'll have a tendency to splotch. So like areas like that might leave a dark splotch in the sky. So I'm just watching out for that. I'm also just trying to come up with how I want this scene to take place. Maybe we can do a, a stream that's receding back. And it could open it up in front of us. That'd be a great opportunity to use white as well. But that might be just for another video. Maybe staying in, like I said, with the craft being the lightest tonal value would be the way to go. So we'll create a path. I used to play with a more expanded palette. 
I would use Payne's Gray on the edge of paths or um, or streams. I think Maybe like that. If I go above and below, it'll create the look of a stream. And if I was to go horizontal, we'd probably get more of a uh, path effect. kind of nice being able to kind of go back and forth between those if you so choose. Let's see. some texture in there, adding some interest, and let's go to the very edge because if it's exactly 8 by 10, if it was to be matted, it would really cut things close. And this is also giving me a moment to reflect on where I want to go with this actual image. But the craft paper does just work really well with the sepia, it seems like. It just lends itself. We'll go there. There we go. Alright, here's some stronger pigment bring that up there what I'm doing is kind of working on layers from the background forward uh, one of my concerns that I had that it was unspoken while I started putting this together was that I had a background and then I had the extreme foreground. And sometimes to me that kind of just feels a little lacking. So I am looking to create at least a few layers of depth between the two. I do feel a little restricted by the 8x10. However, um, usually we're using 11 by 14 a quarter sheet on here. But I shouldn't um, let that be an excuse because when I've been playing with oils and acrylics, some of them are on 5x7, which is obviously smaller than this. And let's see. And then from there, there's been a gentleman posting on some tonalist, uh, contemporary tonalist pages, I believe, where he is um, painting smaller than that in a while, so I shouldn't let the smaller sizes restrict me. But in general, I think you kind of get used to a size at times. Um, also, the larger sizes kind of let you just uh, get more free-flowing and gestural rather than kind of honing in on small points. Then on the other hand, I'm sure there's a size where I would feel it'd be large enough, but it would start feeling restricting to the point that it was uh, drying quicker than I was handling it. 
So just different things to keep in mind. stream, more reflect, reflection. In the last video I was using the back of the nail to scrape. Probably use that as a little tester to see what spots are scrapable and how the moisture is looking. Just the roundness of the fingernail. Well, push the paper back and just be less um, less damaging to the paper. So you can use sharp edges, you can use round edges, um, you can use fingernails, a bunch of different scraping techniques you can implement. I think I do want a big tree element in the foreground though. So where do I wanna put that? start it right here there we go so we're still wet and wet and different areas are going to um, kind of diffuse more than others you can probably see that starting to take place here you can see kind of the feathering on the edges I think that I don't paint much of that I would like to do and I think both uh, Ron Ranson and James Fletcher Watson have examples of it in their book. Um, is taking the trees, putting a big tree element in it where it is wet and wet, letting it diffuse to the point where it looks like it has uh, moss or um, other things growing all around it or ivy. It's a really cool effect. I just have not really explored that. branch. I think we'll bring foliage in here. We cannot look quite so bleak. shadow here even though we're already in such darkness we could almost look at it as um, if it was nighttime and there was the glow of a, a city on the horizon Branches, just a little scraping. You can put little highlights and texture in there. You can even put one of the fallen trunks coming up and over. I feel like I haven't done that in a while. Or the branch kind of reaching out and over. There we go. growth out of here. size of the composition. I 
allow me to put a little foliage up here down the side. Now the moment of truth will be when we dry this off and we see the value shift that takes place. Uh, I found that for me personally, if I stay in the wet wind phase and I just keep on going, I don't have as much as a value shift as I expect. And I think that's simply because the water is just being removed during that time period. Um, slowly as opposed to just hitting it with a blow dryer and having that quick change. Also I've found you know putting more pigment in does help. But it's just something to be cognizant of, just be aware that that's gonna happen. I'm just kind of filling in those spots. So let's pause this. I think we've created some interest. And we'll probably come in with a second uh, hit um, with the paint. All right, so after that dry off, um, it's softened up, but it actually looks really nice. Um, we do have the bronzing effect, which I've mentioned before. That's just from excessive pigment. Um, it kind of gives it a leathery uh, sheen. Uh, we could accent some of these pieces they're black sometimes I usually would do a second layer um, this will create a sense of depth because so we see the foliage that we put in where that softened as it dried but I'm kind of wondering if I just want to maybe just hit a few spots just taking the number one And just making a few defining strokes. And maybe just leaving it at that. Kind of almost like uh, Zoltan Zabo. In his books, he'll have a wet and wet portion. Um, a lot of examples will be trees in front of a uh, kind of a distant background of trees, maybe in the snow. So you'll have that softness uh, diffusion for the distant trees, and then you'll have a dry brush effect for the closer tree. But this one softened up so much, but really softened up and tied together. A few marks is all we need. Just a little bit. Let's try that and see how that looks. I really think that's the way to leave it. We're gonna have to do more on this craft paper um, because the white gouache is gonna need to be explored in combination with this and see how we are pushing in both directions. But overall, we'll, uh, we'll leave it at that. So I hope you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, follow. And if you follow along, um, please uh, you know, share with me what you do. I want to see it. Um, feel free to tag me on Instagram. Y'all have a great day and take care. Bye.